thank you for the introduction. Um, I don't want to start, well, for, first, thank you for having me as a, as a keynote. I wasn't uh, supposed to be the keynote, but I'm happy to fill in for Marcus. I'm not a big American. I don't have a mustache, and he's probably more interesting than me. Um, that's funny, actually. I was supposed to have a mustache, but my wife vetoed it. Vetoed it. Um, my first slide is uh, maybe a little depressing, but I think um, in recent years, a lot of our uh, peers have um, passed away. And normally I would do a slide only on Barnaby Jack because he's a, he was a colleague of mine. But I thought, b especially because there was a um, recent death from uh, Cedric and Peter as well, um, I thought it was a good time to um, remember that we always stand on the, on the shoulder of giants. Um, and there's people that we have to be reminded of that they contributed a lot to our community. So this is uh, a slide that I definitely wanted to start off with. Um, I heard from the organizers that they also wanted to um, Rem remember some people, and I probably forgot some people that um, that you think about. Um, let me improvise this. I suggest that there is a flip chart there. If there's somebody that you remember or some something that you want to um, put on paper, just take the uh, in in between talks or during breaks, write down whatever you want, and then we can keep that, and the organizers can do something with that. How does that sound like an idea? Okay. So this is an important slide for me. Um, I'm in, uh, on the board of directors of IC Square. Is, are there any CISSPs in this room? Have you voted already? Have you put in your vote for the elections? OK, awesome. Um, if you haven't already, um, go to the website, log in, and put in your vote, because it's important for me to have good colleagues for, to work with next year. And it's you that decide who that will be. So thank you for that. And then we d dig into the meat of the uh, presentation. Um, the presentation came about in a very funny way. Uh, I was having beers with um, uh, somebody that was in security in the past um, here, in, here in Vienna, but she decided to stop um, in security and she's now working as a diplomat. Um, and we were talking about China and APT and um, especially, especially the report by, by Mandy and earlier this year um, that was really focused and um, America-centric, it has a very America-centric vision. Um, and I, ha I happen to know a thing or, or two about China. Um, I studied some um, Chinese culture when I was in university and I'm also married to a Ch Chinese wife, wh which is not always representative for the whole Chinese population, but I have a small uh, sample bias in this presentation maybe. Um, but I think it's important to look at China from a Chinese way, to understand their culture and some cultural co concepts that could help defenders um, to understand the threats and to also um, address it better. So I'm Wim Remes, I'm not really important. I'm a managing, managing consultant at, at IOActive, uh, director at IC Square and uh, organizer of the Brucon Conference in Belgium. Um, the first thing I want to show you, and I hope this works well, um, is um, a video.
。但是扔得很酷嘛，你要是学会美国那个酷的方式，才能真正跟他们相处好。So it's not just like an environment where you can just sit and then like act naturally. So I always have to try. I'm blur. I'm freshman as well. I don't know what I'm going to concentrate. You have to really understand their their、um, pop culture, and you have to you know watch TV shows that they usually watch.、Um, so there's definitely some some jokes, and I had no idea about. <laughs>、um, but it's fine. I can tell jokes that they don't understand. So he's talking about like you get drunk every day or something in China, which I don't. I never. 
that, that was suggested by somebody. I, I didn't find that on my own, unfortunately. Um, now, if you look at, the, at America, um, there, there is a sentence that every American has said as, at least once in their life. Um, I, I'm not going to say it because I'm not American. Um, but one nation under God, um, I, I relate that to uh, the mandate of heaven. I mean, if God approves of America, then everything is good. Um, and if you look at that cycle uh, in Chinese history, um, in the beginning it was like 700 years for every dynasty, and then it went down to uh, 200, 100 years, so you have a cycle. Uh, and I believe if you look at the larger uh, geop ge geopolitical um, field, then I believe at this moment that um, the U.S. is losing the mandate of heaven uh, and is struggling to keep that, uh, um, well, their, their strong position, it, both on, um, on a political um, level and on, um, on the um, economical level. Now, delving into APT, what you cannot expect from me for in this talk, and I think that's a good thing, uh, I'm not going to try to really define APT, and I'm gonna, not going to use any um, Art of War quotes. I went through the APT report again, and I wasn't really happy when I read it uh, the first time. I'm, I wasn't really happy when I have to, had to read it again for this talk. Um, but I took a, a little um, different approach. Um, I started to look for, for words that reference to um, how they related that to the, um, to the Chinese people and the Chinese um, society. And if you look for culture in the report, there's two references, and they're all um, part of the word agriculture. Uh, and tradition is used as well, but it's always uh, part of the word uh, traditional uh, when they talk about tradi traditional Chinese characters. Uh, so there's really no reference whatsoever. Going back to the uh, dynastic cycle, because I think uh, that's where the core of the Chinese society, even as it ex exists now, um, is uh, what was built. Um, quickly going through the cycle, so the leadership obtains the mandate of heaven. Um, they grow weaker over time. Um, some disasters uh, struck, and the people believe that the dynasty has lost God's approval. It's overthrown. There's a new leadership, and we go back into a cycle. What I'm going to do now in the presentation uh, is go through, through some um, very deep um, Chinese uh, beliefs. The first one that I wanted to touch upon uh, is Nei versus Wai. Those are two characters that are really important uh, in, Chinese, uh, in Chinese culture. Um, and they mean, in, uh, Nei means inside and Wai means outside. Um, and here you have the family, but even within the family, um, there, there is ne and Y implemented. Uh, which means ne is everything that happens in, in the house and where uh, within Chinese culture the wife is responsible. And I'm not going to discuss on uh, the sexist, sexist elements of that, but it's really strict there. The wife takes care of the internal part and the man takes care of the, out, um, of the external part. Um, then ne also is your family towards the community but you are also nay within your community. And then the rest of the, everything outside your community is why. You as a country are nay, everything outside your, outside, outside your country, and China is a very big country, so everything outside China um, are barbarians. Um, that was like that in the dynasties, and they really still believe. Um, the, the word for, um, um, for foreigner is la wai old outsider. So they, it, it's still ingrained in the culture. Um, we've seen that um, over the years, China has a, what they call a tributary, tributary system. Um, they never really built until very recently, and then I talk about, about 100 years ago, um, they didn't have a minister for foreign relationships because they didn't think it was necessary. Everything was about China. They had approval from heavens. Um, and other countries could get benefits from doing business with China by paying tribute, tribute to, the, to the emperor. And that's how they worked. Um, if you look at Chinese history, um, they never conquered or they never um, did any coloniza colonization across the world. Um, they didn't have a navy, so they never had a, 
big set of boats that they took out to go to war with other countries and conquer other land. Uh, they did have boats to do expeditions uh, to make sure that uh, people far away could pay tribute to them, which is a very smart thing to do, I think. And the second um, element that I want to talk about is um, a very interesting thing called Guanxi. Is anybody doing business with China or has uh, relationships with uh, Chinese companies or are you familiar with this with this concept? Um, if you look at the, um, uh, for me the right, uh, for me the left, for you the right part of the slide, uh, this is how Western societies are built. Um, there is a hierarchy of people. Uh, in China, there is no really, not really a hierarchy of people. There is guanxi, which is uh, which means relationships. Everybody has. Um, <laughs> That sounds really bad. Everybody has relationships with everybody else, but not, the, not in that kind of way. Um, and basically, the number of relationships and where, are you, where you are positioned in this, in this grid um, defines your hierarchy. Um, and your guanxi is very important. Uh, you have to protect your, um, your connections. Um, so it's, it's based on, uh, on your reputation, on um, uh, how well you treat your connections. And the more connections you have, the more people you can connect to other people, and the more important you get within um, that uh, w w within society. Um, so ob obviously, there are also uh, hierarchical relationships. Um, the simple one being ruler ver uh, versus subject, uh, which is the leadership um, of a country, of a of a company, of anything, um, to whoever is beneath there. Uh, then parent ver versus child, and I'm going to dig into that a little further uh, in a few minutes. Uh, and then older, older sibling versus younger sibling, husband uh, versus wife, and older friend versus younger friend. Uh, those are the five main relationships that are defined within Chinese culture. Uh, and then there is uh, one more uh, relationship, which is equal to the parent versus child relationship. Uh, and that's a relationship between a student and their teacher. There is basically Outside your parents, there is nobody more important than your teacher. Um, if you look at that from an APT point of view, the people that you, that you learn from and that you work with, um, that teach you how to um, hack into American servers, so to say, uh, is something, someone that you have to respect for the rest of your life. The last concept, and this is uh, something that goes really far, Everybody knows the, the phrase, lose face, right? In China, it's really important. And I can illustrate that with uh, a, a personal story. When I first met my then girlfriend, now wife, and I don't know how she uh, held up with me for so long. So we're ma married to, uh, 11 years this year. Um, when her father found out, so her father is also Chinese. That happens when you have a Chinese girlfriend. The father happens to be Chinese. Um, he, he basically told her, um, you have to leave the house or uh, you drop your boyfriend. Um, she luckily chose to leave the house. Um, I think mostly because it was an appropriate time for her to move on and start living on her own. Uh, it was not for me. Uh, but I tried to understand why he did that. And he basically did that because within his group of friends, he would lose face if his Chinese um, daughter would, would be connected to a, to a Belgian white guy. And it took him four years um, to get to grips with that. And when he saw that uh, some of his peers, so, uh, his, his brother, for instance, uh, their daughter also was uh, dating a Belgian guy, and they were okay with it, uh, he, be he became okay with it as well. Um, funny, funny thing is that there are three words for, uh, for face, and they all, all three mean different things. Um, but the main thing to remember is that somebody that's uh, Chinese, um, you always if you want to maintain a relationship with that person, you always have to make sure that uh, you don't make him lose face. The moment that you um, have someone and you make him lose face, then you're going to have to do a lot of work to bring that relationship again. And now when we looked at the, after we looked at those uh, different concepts, um, it's not my job to define APT. Um, I want to look at APT from uh, a cultural pr perspective. So from a cultural pr pr perspective, I believe that uh, Chinese attackers 
that are uh, organized um, believe that they are mandated to do this. For them, it's okay to do this. Uh, obviously, for the people that are attacked, that's not. But that's not what matters for, for us. Uh, from a cultural perspective, they believe they are mandated to do this. Um, knowing how they build relationships, we also learn um, that we work with a very closely knit group of people. Uh, it's not one person, it's multiple persons. They work together and they have very strong relationships. Um, they are binded and from their perspective, the people that they are attacking um, are barbarians and they don't really matter. Everything is about China, everything is about our goal um, and er everything outside um, of their belief structure uh, doesn't matter. What I think is most important to remember, um, especially if you remember the video that I, that I showed you, um, they understand us probably better than we understand ourselves. Uh, so they actually do work to understand our culture much more than we do uh, to understand their culture. Um, they cannot lose face. I mean, the, the way the Mandiant report was brought out um, it was really offensive towards Chinese people. Um, Obviously, Mandian does, doesn't have any interest to, do, to go and do business in, um, in China, but from a political point of view, probably the US government had to do a lot of damage control there. Uh, and it's much harder to work with the Chinese once you make them lose face. Um, that's important for you as a defender to know as well. If you have somebody attacking your infrastructure, he's part of a, of a larger societal structure. Um, the attacker that you're working with or working against, um, if you try to make him lose face, uh, you impact their structure directly. Um, we have to try to understand the position of the actor that you're working with as well. They, they, have, a, they have a hierarchy where, the, where you have scanners, uh, people that actually do exploitation, people that do uh, exfiltration. You have to try and understand uh, the position of the person that is currently on your infrastructure. If you understand that, um, you can also understand better um, how to work with it. Um, with a specific attacker, do you want do you want to work um, to wait until somebody with a higher position comes in uh, and tries to do exfiltration, or do you want to um, nix him immediately? Um, trying to understand their position is um, very important as well. And then you have to understand that it's never one person that you're dealing with; it's always a large team. Um, so, work to understand their structure, understand how how they are built, how they are um, working together. Um, and those are basically the, the, the main gu guidelines I want to give um, with this presentation. Um, and I think I'm a little... Well, I have some, some time left. Um, if anybody has uh, some questions about uh, specific parts of this presentation or, or Chinese culture or experience that you have, feel free to ask. Microphone, or yeah. I will I will come to you. Very interesting talk. A uh, question is: uh, If Chinese co company have a, a branch somewhere nearby you, and you are working with that branch, are you a barbarian? Uh, this is this branch a barbarian branch? Well, where is Nei and Wei? That's a very good question. Uh, so. The question is, if, if you're, um, you have a Chinese company uh, close to you, um, are there Y or are they nay? The concept that I talked about earlier. Um, as far as I would understand it, um, they are still nay within um, their own company, um, but they could be by some departments, if, if, if it's a specific um, department of that branch, they, they could be considered Y. Um, so within a company, you would have nay is the whole company, uh, but then different departments also have their concept of uh, NAY and Y. Uh, and you, even though you are close to that company and doing business with them, you always remain Y. Uh, so it, it's, it's kind of interesting to see the difference in culture. How can people really start to learn more about 
the differences in culture and start to work better with people in China instead of constantly working against them? Um, I, I don't think it's China alone. Um, I learned I learn a lot about understanding and trying to understand other cultures by, by traveling. That's uh, the first thing you need to do, expose yourself to other culture. Um, one, one of the main books I used to, to research this topic uh, was finally a book written by Henry Kissinger, who has done a lot for um, Chinese-American relationships. He has written a book on China, which is titled On China. Um, that was supposed to be a joke. Ha ha, okay. Uh, <laughs> And that book, is, it, it, it's, it's a very big, big book or a lar large book, but it's um, very interesting to read. He goes through all the dyn dynasties, um, how they expose themselves to the, um, to the outside world, and then es especially the turning point where, um, I don't know if anybody knows a little bit about Chinese history, uh, but there was a moment where the British were basically just fed up with the Chinese. Um, and while they wanted to maintain that relationship, they also came out with their navy and they completely trashed them at their ports to force them to start working uh, with outside, co outside countries to, um, um, to, do, to do actual business. And that's also the moment where, they, uh, implemented, where the Chinese implemented their foreign relationships um, ministry for the first time. Um, so I think reading some books about uh, China in particular, but exposing yourself to other, other cultures all the time is uh, really valuable, not only for your security job, for, but for yourself as a person as well. I have lots of questions, sorry. Um, so do you think that the Mandian APT1 report has done irrevocable damage? Or do you think it's just another one of those situations where it was a flash in the pan, wonderful for Mandian as a marketing tool, but it just doesn't matter in the long term? Or do you think we need to try and revisit some of the accusations and maybe try and make things a little bit better? Um, again, that's a very good question, and I didn't expect very good questions from you. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that on a political level it has done uh, irrevocable damage. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, it really was a marketing effort. I mean, it was uh, one week before RSA uh, this year that they published it. It doesn't have a lot of uh, conclusive data. There, there's a lot of assumptions in it. Um, and it would be interesting if they actually uh, released their data set and other people could take a look at it, at it both from a technical point of view and from a cultural point of view, uh, to come up with a more unbiased report but I doubt that it's going to happen. Uh, you had multiple times the phrase, uh, we are barbarians. Is that a phrase um, seen to generally everyone um, outside of China, or is it a phrase um, pointed towards uh, Western, um, Western cultures? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's actually um, a, a concept that is actually um, part part of the uh, part of the Chinese culture. Everything outside China is barbaric. We don't need to, and by by bar barbaric, they actually mean uh, we don't need to to do an effort to understand them because they don't matter. They're outside China. They they don't have the approval from uh, from the heavens, and they just don't matter. And that's the those are the bar barbarians, and that's a concept. Uh, that, that's not something I came up with. That's really, uh, if, you, if, you, if you read Chinese history um, literature, it's a concept that's um, really ingrained in, um, in Chinese history. I'll be right back. There was one before you. Uh, how much of this cultural uh, thing is generic Asian, and how much of this is just China? I get very good questions today. I love you. Um, so if, if you look at, um, this is very specific Chinese. Um, if you look at Japan, for instance, they have very similar concepts, uh, but they are completely um, separate from China. And uh, there, there was even um, 
a lot of conflict uh, b between both. Uh, if you look at uh, other ch um, other Asian countries uh, like Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, Singapore, um, even the Philippines, they have completely other concepts and they are more open to um, to Western culture. Uh, this is really very specific Chinese. Yeah, going back to the idea of that we're all barbarians, I guess, um, doesn't that contradict a little with what we saw in the video where it really showed that the Chinese people were, were trying to understand the Western culture and, and, and were making a very big effort. So it, it, it wasn't that it didn't matter to them. They, were, they really wanted to know. Um, and also, I guess, uh, and another question, um, your timeline stopped at, uh, I guess, the Boxer Rebellion. What, what has changed since then? Um, those two questions are actually uh, interrelated. Um, at after, after the Boxer uh, Rebellion and when the Communist Party came to um, came to be, um, they understood that there were some things there they were that they were they were missing. Um, and in the earlier 1900s, uh, they sent out uh, some of their smarter people, um, especially to French universities, but also to U.S. universities. And it was not to reach out to other people, but just to, acqui to acquire what they were missing. Uh, what you see in, um, e economically like right now, and I watched some documentaries on that, um, there is a thing they call um, block, and block and paste, where there is a new te technology, like for instance, Twitter comes out. Um, they don't adopt Twitter. They look at how Twitter works, they implement their own version, and they uh, block uh, Twitter at the, at the Chinese firewall. So they have Weibo. Um, we have Twitter. And in that sense, they want to learn from the outside world, but they don't, don't want to involve the outside world. And that concept still in their economic, economic ventures, you still see that happen um, very much. So if you've Yeah, do you think that that concept you described just right now could change in a few generations? So do you think that <coughs> maybe the old Chinese people are, I don't know, are living this concept uh, and then the younger generation is more, you know, um, they want to, to interconnect with other people, with maybe the, the West or whoever? Again, a very good question. Um, and I think we, we, in the next uh, 20 to 50 years, we, we will see that change indeed. Uh, that change is already very appar apparent in, uh, in um, uh, the southern region of China, in uh, Shenzhen and, and Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong is something different, but in Shenzhen, you see a lot of um, young American or uh, American Chinese um, coming back to China because there is a culture or, or um, motivation to, um, for um, economic innovation. So they bring everything that they uh, learned there and also the culture that they, they've acquired overseas um, back to China. So you see that there's um, young entrepreneurs that are battling against the communist system and trying to inflict change in, in that way. So I think within a certain amount of time, we will definitely see that change. So how, um, could you tell anything about um, how they uh, deal with um, uh, privacy information? There are a lot of stories that, uh, for example, companies try to establish there and uh, they say, okay, you have to, to do business with us, you have to put a factory here, and after that they, they can start uh, replicating uh, their products. And so it seems that they, they are very aggressive in that way. So anything you can tell about that? Um, so I didn't deal, do a lot of research about that topic uh, for, for this presentation, um, but it comes back to that uh, concept that I called um, block and paste, uh, where they will allow you to come and build your factory uh, to start producing, and then they will make it extremely difficult for you to actually, for instance, export the stuff that you produced. Uh, so in the end, you will have to go out of business, but they have acquired everything that you have done, um, and they know how to do it better than you. Uh, so those are things that you definitely see um, happening on an economic scale. Uh, 
We have heard a lot of, about China, but there is also the other thing. Do you think that we should also focus on this problem with other cultures? I mean, we have in the security area, we have lots of um, threats from different countries which do have different cultures. I mean, it might not be that extreme that with the Chinese, but still, there are differences. Um, I, I would agree with you, um, but especially for China, uh, because their culture is um, built over so many years and really ingrained um, in, in, into, the, into the core of the, of, of the country and the people, um, it's a little bit different. Um, especially if you, if you, for instance, look at Eastern Europe, um, the drivers for, for hacking and for, um, well, hacking into companies and, and, and steal assets is more economic than it is cultural. Um, but I think it always helps to understand uh, other cultures and um, to work from that concept more than just from a we good guys, they bad guys um, concept. Any more questions? Okay, then I would like to close it down here. Oh, one more, sorry. I get a lot of exercise here. <laughs> Uh, you talked a lot. You talked a lot, a lot about the motivations and culture of the Chinese. You talked a little about what we, what would we, what should we change in our relationship to China? Should we stop um, dealing with them? Should we advise our companies in, here in Europe to open uh, branch offices in China? Uh, should we tell them to stop outsourcing to China? What's your concrete steps we should advise our companies here in, here in Europe to do? Okay, I'm going to address it with uh, um, the simple phrase that um, it's not a threat, it's an opportunity to start with. Um, I think, especially in the past few months, uh, we've learned that uh, the threat doesn't only come from China, it also comes from the US, um, and all our data belongs to them. Um, so why should we focus on China as an adversary, if even the strongest power in the world uh, is an adversary to, uh, to everybody else in the world? Um, I wouldn't focus on China, but I would try to, um, if they belong in your threat model and that doesn't, um, that's not the case for everybody, um, then just try to understand them better. But I don't think, I don't think there needs to be a focus on uh, China as a particular threat when the US and even the UK is uh, a specific threat for my individuals within the, the world. More questions? Going once, going twice. I'm done. So thank you for your attention. Uh, if there are more, more questions. <laughs> <laughs>